And Pymetrics is being used at more than 50 companies around the world, including some in Asia, to help employers and employees find the right job match. Mark Yu sat down with the company's CEO, Frida Poli, an MIT-trained neuroscientist who decided she wanted to leave academia. Here I was, a 30-something with a 30-page resume, thinking, what should I do with my life? Like, how, what's my next career move? And nothing in my background really was helpful. And I was put in a situation where I wanted to create a platform where I could do some activities, learn something about myself, and then get matched to the next opportunity that was the right fit for me. And that was essentially how the idea for Pymetrics came about. So how does your program work? So we use neuroscience games and pretty complex AI to help somebody understand their strengths in terms of their cognitive and emotional traits. And then we use that data to match them to the roles that they're best suited for. And the way we understand what they're best suited for is that we will have high performing individuals in different roles at different companies go through the exact same set of games. And that's our training set. That's how we figure out what it takes to be successful in these different roles. And once we have that profile, anyone who's gone through Pymetrics can be matched to any of the profiles that we've built across different industries, across different companies. So how exactly do the games work. I can go on and really play a video game and find out. It's a little less exciting than a video game. It's not like Candy Crush or, you know, Grand Auto Theft. These are scientific exercises that have been developed by the cognitive neuroscience community around the globe. They test things like, you know, your memory, how well you pay attention, your planning, your flexibility on the cognitive side, on the emotional side. It's like how well do you read emotion, um, you know, how altruistic are you, your risk profile, lots of different really critical human functions, essentially, right? And we put them in a sort of fun, gamified environment that you can do on your phone or on your desktop. So how long of a game are we talking about? There are 12 of them, and each take between less than a minute to a couple minutes to finish. In that short time, how many traits are measured? In the total span of 20 minutes that it takes to go through all 12 of them, we collect over 70 different pieces of information about your cognitive and emotional profile. So what are some of the correlations you found between personality types and various jobs? Well, so we have this game that looks at your attention, right? And so some people are super attentive, and other people are a little bit more daydreamy, mind-wandering, right? Right? That's one piece of information that we get from this game. And the cool thing is that there is no right or wrong to any answer to any of these games, right? So if you're really attentive to detail, that will predispose you to being good at certain jobs like accounting, right? If you're kind of more mind-wandering, dreamy, that actually makes you better suited for roles like sales. Um, so again, all of the games we develop, there's no right or wrong answers. It's not like a career SAT. It's really much more about finding your perfect fit. It's like the Harry Potter, Potter sorting hat is how we try to describe our technologies. In Silicon Valley, there's a huge gender gap. How would your technology help solve or impact that problem? So we've actually had companies use us uh, in the application process. And what they found is that all aspects of diversity, not just gender, but ethnic diversity, socioeconomic diversity, goes up after using Pymetrics. Because again, part of the process is that in profiling the existing high successful performers, part of what we do, even if the training set is biased, we basically have this proprietary technique where we will remove any bias from the resulting algorithm. And so what that means is that you're honing in on the key traits that make someone successful rather than sort of these demographic variables which are not predictive of success. So what we found is that companies not only get better quality hiring, but they across the board see improvements in gender diversity in ethnic diversity and in socioeconomic diversity. Are you looking at the data and hoping to see how well you place people and how well they perform? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's obviously like a key component of any technology that you're using. You want to make sure that it's actually bringing you people that are more likely to be successful. And we already have some early proof points of that. We've seen that retention using our system increases anywhere between 30 and 60 percent. You're incorporating artificial intelligence with your technology. So what do you see as the holy grail? I think there are two things that we want, that we see as like the holy grail. One is I do think that through the use of unbiased AI, we can create a workforce that is completely unbiased. I really truly believe that that is an end goal that we can achieve. And then I think the second thing that's really important and less talked about is the fact that this type of technology can be extremely helpful in helping with the shifting labor market, right? So there's tons and tons of press out there on AI destroying jobs and certain job families getting completely decimated. And that's all true, right? Nobody's arguing that. There's far less press 
around using technology to help find people, match people to the jobs that currently are having a really hard time finding talent and then helping them get reskilled. And that's really where we have started playing as well, is helping organizations figure out, okay, of these people whose jobs are getting replaced or you know reduced, how can I find their next fit in the new economy?